Hi everybody and welcome to another tutorial by HG. Uh, this tutorial is actual was actually a question of one of my friends that asked me for uh, a solution that I did and after that I thought that uh, it's maybe worth to share it with other people. Uh, what I have created I, uh, actually and what I want to share with you in this tutorial is ju just a simple uh, a wall of berg and these uh, bergs are uh, full management managementable as you can see here uh, I, you, you can have you have here berg count and you can add as much as you want and you have you can each berg individually you can uh, change the width size and the length size and also uh, the depth we we say here the length of the uh, the bird for example I will do it five and five so mm, they are all the same and we have also an offset here you can see and after that you can also give some texture to it I, I did some texture here so it's full manageable and uh, you can it it's something very usable and uh, oh something else that I forgot to say that this is um, an icon and with scaling this you can see uh, the Berks uh, will try to uh, put themselves into into this area when I if I scale this make it smaller you see I have the same 200 bricks so it will get taller if I make it longer I have the same 200 bricks but in in a longer distance so with a higher uh, with a lower high uh, so this is what we want to create and this is all done with a uh, data operator as you can see and this is what we try to teach you uh, before I go in uh, begin the tutorial you can see that we will uh, use a lot of data operator and don't be afraid it's not so complex as it's look it's very easy if you follow me step by step you will understand everything so uh, for this reason I reset this and begin from scratch uh, first I create a box and this box will be my single uh, big box and uh, this is this is my reference as a bird uh, the second step that I want to do is uh, creating a particle system and as you maybe know a PF source so after I created my PF source, I open it and I simply delete all this stuff here that I have because I don't I don't need them. Uh, for display, I want to have a uh, geometry and I select the uh, PF source and uh, f make it frame by frame and the viewport I will uh, I will have it for 100%. So and for the emit start and emit stop I will say zero zero and just one single particle that I need okay the next step is uh, using data operator but instead of using the interpreter this time I want to use data icon because I, I need I need the icon of uh, of uh, this uh, data operator so I can even make it a little bit bigger okay this is the icon that we have I select it make update and open it uh, first uh, before we begin uh, I want to declare some uh, uh, variables okay so the first variable is this is the uh, icon this is the this icon here and what I want to have from this icon the first is icon size okay so uh, because I want to have the width and the height of this uh, icon and um, 
how can I get this? This is a vector. So I use this convert and I say uh, I, I use the x factor from this vector and I put this x factor to an uh, output new and this output new will be my size width. Okay, right click, rename and size uh, width. Okay, so this is my first variable that I created here. It's a float variable and I close this here. So, okay. And I, have a, I need another one. I can select both of these and I copy and right click and paste. Oh, I just copy just one of them. Okay, no problem. So this time I want to use, uh, I, I need uh, the, the Y factor of this vector. And once again, new output, and this time, uh, oh, I forgot, uh, I should put it to global, okay? And this also global, and I rename this to uh, size length. With the size length, what I mean is these two variables will define the the length and the height of of this icon that i have here okay i also turn this on so i can see everything i select all of this and group and i i name this group to um, rename this group to size dimension or size okay this is the size of of our icon okay the next step uh, will be uh, to create uh, the variables for our uh, Berg. So for this, I use simply a scalar. And uh, for example, I want to have 15. I can, uh, after that ch changes, it's not something very important for now. 15, 15 in 5. And uh, I create a new output new and global also and I rename this to cell width and also another one to rename cell uh, uh, height okay and I put this to here and I put D to here so we can see that we have two other variables here. And this is global, and this is also global. Select both of them, group, and rename this group also to cell dimension. As you can uh, understand, uh, <coughs> this is the width and the height of a single bird that we have. We can say cell or bird. No problem. So I, I want them to, to be exposed there. Okay, or, or after that, no problem. Okay, the next step is uh, to spawn the particle because right now we have just one single particle. <coughs> For this reason, I create another scholar and uh, I wanna have this as integer. And uh, I have a change amount and I put it here and make sure that we have here integer as amount and, and not integer as additive the next step is uh, input uh, input standard and we we want to get sure that uh, this will be happen just in the first even uh, first frame so i put this new in event as a filter to here some of you guys asked me that um, I have to explain some basic stuff more and, uh, and don't go very fast. So I try in this tutorial to do this. Uh, right click and uh, make a group here. And I, I rename this one to particle spawn or big or cell spawn, whatever. Particle spawn. Okay. So uh, here is the order of the execution. It's very important. What I want to have 
uh, I want to have the the particle of spawn at the first the first thing. Uh, I select this, and uh, here in the execution mode, I want to have it in the one, and I want to have all these other in the in the second. Okay, this is the amount of our uh, particle spawn. I can uh, here go and select expose and select the value and here with I can say a uh, num of uh, mm, bricks okay and I, I I add this here I also add the cell width right click mm, sorry here right click expose the value and here uh, okay so wait and add also here the cell height mm, expose okay <coughs> close this too so what we have right now um, actually we have nothing here. <laughs> but we have some variables here just the number of particles that we have here then the cell width that we have here and the cell height and if I go here I can see that I, when I change this amount here they will also have or will also have to change you okay so the next step is uh, to define our origin. Uh, let me first explain what I mean with the origin. Right now, the origin of the of this icon is here in the middle, okay? But I want to begin. Uh, I want to have the the bricks uh, from here at the beginning, on the top left of the icon that I have. So for this reason, uh, I need uh, I need to calculate first uh, the, pos the current position uh, the current pivot point of my icon and uh, I should uh, subtract <coughs> the half of the the half of the length and uh, add the half of the width so I can I can come to this point uh, so this is the point that I want to have my first break so that's what I want to do right now I hope that you can you you could understand and um, follow me. Okay, for this, I I once again use the icon, and this time instead of icon size, I need the icon pivot. And uh, from this icon pivot, uh, I need to extract it. So convert the x factor. I need the x factor from here. And um, well, as I said before, the half of the size width. So uh, input, input custom size uh, width, and function, and also scalar. And the value of the scalar should be two. Why? I because I want to have the half of it, real, real, and this should be um, division. So I have the half of this width, and uh, what I want to do, subtract it from this one. So another function that I'm using here, real, and this should be subtract. Mm. So, and this will be my. Uh, this will be my my. Uh, <coughs> Uh, x value the next step is to calculate uh, uh, the, the the y value for the y value I, I can copy the whole stuff here copy and paste it here Wh why I want to do this because it's somehow the same process but with some changes here instead of x we want to have the, the y here instead of the uh, width, we want to have uh, the length, the size length, 
and here instead uh, of a subtraction what we want to have is to add addition we need and this will be our uh, y and uh, another uh, converter and this time I need the z, the z, the z1 so I have you the three of them the x the y and the z1 so I create another converter and say I want to convert from uh, real to vector so I will have here three inputs for x for the y and for the z and uh, the output will be a vector and this will be my new variable so I re I create a new variable here, uh, output new, and I name this, uh, it should be a vector, global, and I name this to um, origin. As you can see, uh, right now I am just only defining my variable, I, I haven't yet begun my work, and um, input input I, c I bring an input standard for new in an event to get just get sure that this will ha all this stuff will happen just in the first frame and I cop connect this to here so this e this will be my uh, origin I bring this here make it a little bit smaller and uh, before before going further I select my origin it's right now in the second um, um, execution order I, I put it to the third, so it, the execution order will be the, the third, and the priority order to one. So I select all of them, and uh, group, make a group, and rename this to, uh, rename this to origin. Okay, so right now just we are trying to define our variable. And the last thing that uh, before be beginning our work is to defining our shape. Uh, for the shape, I'm using a uh, mm, shape control here. And uh, this will be very important to have your execution order to three and two. So this will be, mm, this will be created, this will be, executed in the third execution order so and here uh, I created a box before here and I just select my box so I get sure that your box is here and after this just add some parameter that we need the parameters that we need is the length and uh, the width and uh, the height okay these are the three parameters that we need for the for the length I, I use a random and this random will be my uh, I, I make it to uniform for example minimum from 5 to 8 for example and uh, this will be my for my length okay and um, for the for the width uh, for the width I will use uh, an input custom a variable that I already defined it cell width and for the I, I use another input custom and this input custom will be my cell height so you see that I created my uh, my variables and right now I am trying to use them and I connect this also to here so and uh, for the last thing is I need an input uh, um, input standard for new in event to get sure that all this stuff will happen just in the first frame okay so and uh, we have all we have already the cell width and uh, the cell width and the cell height but we, we don't have we haven't um, the length of the, our berg or cell. So what I want to do 
is just select my uh, mm, random and uh, right click and expose and I select the minimum and I, I just type your uh, min uh, length and make add I close this once again I select it and go once again to expose and this time to the maximum and say uh, write uh, max uh, length and um, as you can see here I close this and I close this here too we have right now created this so we hide and min and maximum length to 5 and 8 but uh, we can still see nothing because uh, we have no position but we have created all the stuff that all the preparation are finished right now so we can begin with our work I, I make a group here and rename these two uh, to uh, shape okay sorry forget to press the enter button okay right now I finished everything but because we have no position here we uh, defined no position here we can see no particles here so uh, the the last and the main the, the heart of this code will begin right now and we created all this variable to use it here right now okay um, for this reason uh, I begin my work. Uh, I bring an input uh, input custom, and this input custom will be my origin, one of my variables that I created. And um, what I want to have first, in, uh, we begin with our x factor that um, I just uh, bring a converter and say I want to have just the x value. So and let us begin before I begin I bring uh, a, another input custom another variable that I uh, define and it will be my cell width and uh, another mm, I need an input standard uh, bring an input standard here and this input standard I, I want to have the ID of the particle and I want to have another input uh, custom, another variable that I defined, and it will be the size width, size width, and uh, I will bring another um, mm, uh, variable that I defined, and this time I use the cell width, uh, cell width. Don't be afraid, I will explain it everything step by step. Just bring this all this stuff here beside each other and uh, when you did this all this stuff okay I bring a function and what I want to have I go here to real and uh, I want to divide uh, from uh, uh, division from the size width to cell width so I have a division here and um, I, I bring a converter and I want to convert this from a uh, real to integer after I convert it converted it from real to integer wh what I want to do is to create a function here and in this function I want to have both of them from to integer and the function should be a, a, a division reminder and I select here and uh, solve it and I multiply this I bring a function here and I want to multiply this uh, from the from the real to sorry real to integer and I want to have multiplication okay so after I multiplied this uh, this will be my uh, okay and I, I want to I want to have this right now and 
Rio. And here I need addition. I add this stuff to my origin. And I create a converter. And this converter uh, I want to have from real to uh, vector. So I will have all three. And I have an output here. Output. Uh, output standard and this output standard will be my uh, my position so uh, and I put this will be my X all this stuff will be my X and just uh, to see the result I, I bring another convert here and make sure that this will be to the Y and make a copy and paste again and the third one I want to have this to Z okay I will do this just to see the result okay let's see what we have right now first try to save it to zero one I just move one frame forward <coughs> to the first and you can see that what I have here right now is uh, this perks so make edge face as you can see if I uh, right now I have just uh, seven bricks so I will have just seven bricks here I can have the the minimum and the maximum length to the same size so if I have this you can see all these bricks are have the same length I can change uh, the height of them six and also the the width of them but this is the problem that you can see uh, what I have right now here you can see that I, if I increase this uh, I have another and another brick right now but the next one come, will come exactly in, in the position of the first one so you cannot see them we have for example here right now 50 particles and if I also go here to the display uh, options and uh, particle count you can see that they are fairly particle but all the particles are in the same places so you cannot see them why it's so and if i uh, increase or decrease it here you can see uh-huh you can see that i have a lot of particle but uh, the first row is right but because i haven't uh, ex uh, explained uh, or defined the height of the or the z uh, axis of these particles they will be just in the first row so you cannot see them but uh, why it's happening so so let's see what we have done here we said that we have a we have a uh, width size for example we have a width size of 50 and we have a cell size for example 5 so 50 divide 5 will be 10 so here and we make this two integer so here we, the computer will understand that we ha we can just have 10 bricks in one row. So what we want to do, we will say we will say mode. The index of the particles remind uh, the the amount of the the sum of the particles uh, or the bricks that we have we can have in, in a row. So. If you are not uh, understand with this reminder uh, very easily, it's a mode function. For example, when I write here mode, this is the same function. Sorry, mode. For example, we have here uh, I, the ID of the particle is, for, for example, the two, the second particle, and we can have just ten particles in a row. If I select it, you will see that I have two here. So this will be. 
this is if this will be the uh, position of the second particle the two and these two will be multiplied by the uh, or x factor of my origin and will come here but if I have for example the twelfth particle let's see what we have for the twelfth particle enter and it's once again two why because it, it's rem it's a reminder of this uh, of this uh, uh, division if I have even uh, 52 the, the, the reminder will be once again 2 so this is why the, if the particles are creating once again and they will come they will end up in the same position while we didn't declare the, the, the y position here but if I uh, try to move the origin you can see it's moving with it because after uh, mm, calculating mm, the x factor here that we did here in this part we, we are uh, we are adding it to the x factor of the origin but there, there is a, a small problem and this is because mm, the particle will begin from the center of the first berg so what we want to do we have to calculate this the half of the first berg so it's it's it will be very easy done but uh, it, it should it should be done uh, so for this I bring another input custom and this input custom will be my seal cell width and I will have an uh, and scalar and this will have should have the value of 2 and a function and in this function I want to have it as real and I want to divide it division and after this what I want to have is another function and in this function I want to say I want to have real and this time addition okay I add this value to our output okay, and let's connect this here so if you can see here right now it will begin from the uh, uh, right corner right now so this is what we did until now right now we have to uh, we should go to the next part and the next part will be our uh, uh, z uh, axis to define our z axis you saw that it was very easy it's just looking not easy but it's in actuality it's very easy so here we have our uh, our y of our origin and uh, actually we, we is the y we need we need the z one actually so because we need the high okay so first I bring an input custom and this time I need my cell high I need another variable oh no first I need my um, input standard once again I need my index birth index and after that I need my size width which will be my another variable that I defined size size width and another one that will be my size high uh, so, sorry cell height so size width on size height I think no this is wrong so so with I need once again the cell width and I I will explain it to you why so width and size width so first uh, we try to uh, to divide these two from each other with the real the size width from the cell width so this is the same process we want to we want to understand or we want to know 
how many bricks we can have in one row and we can get it so from the div division from the size width from the cell width for example 50 we have uh, <coughs> the size is 50 and each cell will be 5 so we will understand that we can have just 10 uh, bricks or particles or cell in one row so after this we, we this is a, a real we try to convert the real to my int to integer why because we want to use this as integer after that and uh, in this time in, instead of getting the mode of it what we want to have if uh, I make a function and I say from integer to integer and I make a division so this is very interesting and after I divide this I, I, I will multiply it by my uh, by my cell height Okay, and uh, after that I will multiply this, uh, and I, oh, I will add this, sorry, to my, uh, to my origin, and uh, so, and after this, I will put it as my output right now as you can see um, if you try to increase the number of bricks you can see that they will they will go higher and higher this is the reason the reason is exactly here because we we from here we know uh, how many um, particles we can have in one row and after this we will divide our index to our uh, to our uh, number of uh, row uh, particles that we have in one row. For example, if we have if if we can have ten, it will be like this: one uh, and divide. Uh, for example, ten, it will be zero. Two divide by ten will be zero until I reach the eleven. When I come to eleven, it will be il one until 20 it will be one so each um, uh, for example 10 or 12 it depends of uh, on my weight will have the same number so this is it and we have uh, for so we can build the the, the, the bricks in rows okay so until now it it's it's good but um, we have to fix something and uh, the thing that we have to fix is as you can see we we need some offset because the bigs are not seeing like this so for creating an offset what uh, what we should do we should go back uh, to our x because uh, what we need we need an offset in the in the x the y uh, the, the z position is right now okay the x uh, factor should have some uh, improvement uh, for this uh, what we want to do is uh, from here I, I create another function and this time um, real or no integer I should have this as integer and instead of get the reminder uh, and, and I will get the division just like here so I can I can now I can now understand uh, if the particle are in the in the first row or in the second row or the third row and so on and so on and I, I connect this to my birth and this here to my uh, real just 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 like here but after I have uh, this uh, division after I get this division what I want to do I will create a scholar and make it as two okay and 
and I create another function so this time uh, <coughs> once again I need it as uh, as a uh, real or sorry I need it as integer and this should be also an integer and <coughs> So, and uh, I need the reminder of two so I can right now understand each second row I can right now uh, 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 define each second, second row separately and with this that I have right now I, I will have an if I'll make a condition here and this condition will be an integer and if the if the value is equal to zero so if it's if it in other words if it's the second row okay each second row so why I need this here because here uh, I create an scholar and I rename this to uh, rename this to offset and also I right click and make an expose and value make an offset and add and I close this and I delete here this one and uh, what I want to do I bring a function and this function should be a real and uh, offset plus plus the, this value bam and I create a pipeline and I will say if it's the second row you see here if b1 is false it will be r2 so if it's the second one here and So let's see what we have right now. Uh huh. Not data icon. Okay. You can see I have an offset here. And but but right now it it's it's wrong. But you can see that it it's working, but. Uh, I have to change it here. Here I have to change it from here and de delete this here. It's connect this to here and this one to here. It it means uh, right now it's okay. It means if it's the second row uh, here, although if B1 is false, so if it's uh, the second row it will be up applied with this offset and if it's the first row it will be applied here the, the, the first value so we can see that we can have some offset here and uh, the last thing uh, that I want to do is this I select the here and uh, I, I make some uh, division some segment 10 10 10 maybe this is okay and uh, I go here and uh, make a um, uh, noise for example 5 1 half or 1 or half it, it's up to you a fractal and right click and I turn off these edges and you can see that uh, right now all my uh, birds have the this noise but the problem is that they have all the, the same seed and if I change this it will be changed for all of them so what I want to do I go here and I open this here and and here I select my uh, shape and I add another one and right now you can see that I have also my seed here and I bring a random here 
and this random will be a, a uniform from for example 1 to 1000 and I will con uh, uh, oh, I want to have this as an uh, integer to 1 to 1000 and I will connect this here to here so you can see that right now each uh, particle has its own seat of uh, um, noise and if you think that it's too much you, you can make it less but it, it's looking very very good and uh, the last part if you are interested is to to uh, before before going to the last part just just let me demonstrate it I scale this and you can see the particles are the same but the distribution is right now <coughs> in a long way I can make it smaller and the wall goes higher and higher it's full dynamically and uh, you can increase as much as you want it's it's very powerful thing and uh, you will I think it was worth to share simply to say okay and uh, the last thing is to to get to get the um, map for this it's a little bit complex it's not so easy as to think you first uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to create uh, a box that is approximately uh, the same size of uh, of your wall with a segment of zero one of one one okay and make open material editor and apply a material for example let me apply my material that I have. it's a sample okay I know that it's not a very good example I want to have the tutorial as short as possible so I don't want to waste much time here to explain this stuff I want to just explain the way okay you have right now your particles here and M for material editor and press 6 and here what I want to do first I go here and uh, material static and sorry I drag and drop here make an instance close this and the next one I need uh, my mapping object I select the here uncheck uniform color per particle and add it this one and I select my box and hide it so you can see it looks real but it, it will work ok so you can see that right now I have my particle a wall of birds so I hope uh, you enjoy you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something, and you are like me, a fan of data operators. As you can see, you can do everything with data operator. Very easy to under understand and easy if you go step by step. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any question or ideas or something that you want to create and you need help from me, feel free to ask me, mail me, or whatever. So uh, right now, I wish you a very good day. Bye. Until the next time, have a nice day.